I'm Joanna Simpson here at Quant Minds International in Barcelona. Joining me now is Alexander Sokol, Head of Quant Research at Compatible. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. And just tell me a little bit about how you're finding the conference so far. I think it's an amazing place to learn about the latest trades in quant finance. Uh, you know, so always the best speakers. Uh, so I look forward to the, you know, to, to the rest of the event. Great. And in which areas of capital markets are ML-driven models seeing the greatest take-up? Well, I think uh, one will be hard pressed to find uh, an area where it didn't have any take up. And right? so, uh, you know, it started, of course, uh, you know, hedge funds have been using machine learning for alpha generation for years. Uh, but now more recently, uh, you know, we've seen, uh, you know, so many different applications in trading and risk management as well. And where do you see the greatest take up for the future? I think uh, in the future, uh, uh, you know, what uh, I expect we will see is that, um, uh, you know, techniques that have been developed for other areas of uh, machine learning, you know, which have nothing to do with finance, will be increasingly adopted uh, for quant finance. I think there will be amazing results from that. For example, recently, uh, something that's used for speech recognition was applied to order book uh, analysis. And I think that's a, it's an amazing example of this, uh, you know, cross uh, pollination between completely different fields. You know, at Comparable, we developed recently a model where we adopted, um, uh, you know, a technique that uh, was previously used for uh, image recognition and or, or image, um, uh, you know, analysis and even image modification. We can, for example, add a smile to someone's face and we use it to analyze how the yield curve can change and also to model how it can, could change in the future. So that's another example of how you can take something in machine learning that was developed for one purpose and adopted for a totally different purpose. And machine learning promise faster, more accurate and insightful outputs. But due to their complexity, they also present some unique challenges in terms of model risk management and validation. Uh, what are the main roadblocks for ML models and what can firms do to smooth the path to compliance? Right, yes, I think you raised a very important issue here. So as developers of machine learning models, I think our main challenge is explainability, right? So in other words, uh, make sure that the model is not perceived as a black box but both regulators and auditors understand exactly what it does and what can go wrong, which is key to model adoption. So for example, in a model that we developed at Compatible, which is based on auto encoders, we make sure that we use this auto encoders and machine learning algorithms in a very limited way, intentionally limited, such that uh, we can you know, constrain what it does. We can see exactly what input it takes, what output it produces, and we can then look at this output and make sure that you know, it meets all of the uh, requirements that the regulators and auditors would need to approve a model before using it further. And I think that having a model uh, that's uh, built into simple to understand parts, parts that you can validate independently, is key to the adoption of the model uh, by the practitioner community and its approval by regulators and auditors. And how does one adopt a machine learning model? Right, okay, well, so exactly. How, how does one you know, go about doing it? Well, uh, let me start from how the traditional models work, right? So traditional models uh, are based on equations, right? So sometimes they are stochastic differential equations, something there's something, uh, you know, that's, uh, for example, maybe a parametric basis or a function that you use to fit market data. So uh, usually these equations are developed uh, based on uh, being able to solve something analytically or just by being simple. For example, there is something called the nelson siegel basis which is uh, fitting the yield curve, uh, you know, the turn structure of interest rates uh, to a set of exponents and the exponents, you know, or, or exponential and linear exponential terms, right? Why does it have this form? Simply because, it, you know, it was simple uh, and it was uh, easy to work with. With machine learning, uh, you replace that with something that is actually trained to the historical data to optimally represent the historical curves, right? And it's better simply because it's specifically trained to do exactly what it's supposed to do, as opposed to create, coming up with a formula and then just using it without testing how, how is it, um, uh, you know, how it uh, performs relative to all of the other options. So machine learning generally uh, is adopted by replacing some of these uh, parametric forms or equations with neural networks. In neural networks, they are trained to the historical data, to market data, in order to do the job what these parametric equations were previously doing but hopefully it will be better. Alexander Sokol, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me.